For an orchestra to give an outstanding performance, each musical instrument must be tuned to perfection. A technician working with an engine must give the same care and attention to each individual component. Only when every part is precisely in tune can they combine to strike the right chord for a perfect performance. Performance is important in any car, but even more so for turbos. Turbocharging gives the ideal balance, performance plus economy. It increases power without the additional cost or weight of a larger engine. Racing cars as far back as the 1920s used superchargers, from which the turbocharger has evolved. Superchargers improve performance by blowing the air-fuel mixture into the cylinders and are usually belt-driven from the crankshaft. However, they have one major disadvantage. They absorb power from the engine to drive them. Modern turbochargers perform a similar function, but have the advantage of being driven by the waste exhaust gases. So the turbocharger is effectively providing more engine power without demanding any in return. The turbocharger is bolted to the exhaust manifold. At its heart is the shaft assembly. This has a turbine wheel on one end and a compressor wheel on the other. The shaft assembly is enclosed in a body which comprises a turbine housing, a bearing or center housing, and a compressor housing. Exhaust gases enter the turbine housing from the manifold, powering the turbine, which spins the compressor wheel. This draws air from the filter and blows it under pressure through the carburetor and into the engine. As engine speed increases, the turbine spins faster, increasing pressure. The higher the pressure, the quicker the cylinder is filled, producing more power. This compression of intake air is known as boost pressure. A high volume of oil is fed from the engine lubrication system to the center housing, then through drilled passages to the bearings. An adequate supply is essential as the shaft assembly can rotate at up to 130,000 revs per minute. If the oil supply was to fail, the result would be immediate overheating, which would destroy the remaining oil and result in bearing failure. A wastegate, which acts as a safety valve, is operated by a diaphragm and pushrod. This controls maximum boost pressure, which could otherwise damage the engine through over revving. When boost pressure reaches a predetermined value, it will act on the diaphragm, opening the wastegate via the pushrod. This allows the exhaust gases to bypass the turbine and reduces boost pressure. If the wastegate valve is jammed shut, a relief valve in the plenum chamber will dump the excess pressure to atmosphere, preventing damage to the engine. On the Montego turbo, boost pressure is limited to 10 pounds per square inch by a purely mechanical wastegate. The Metro turbo has basically the same wastegate operation, but incorporates an electronic control system. A solenoid valve, controlled by an ECU, limits boost pressure to 4 pounds per square inch up to 4,000 revs per minute, increasing to 7.7 .7 pounds per square inch at 6,300 revs per minute. This valve, mounted on the left-hand side of the bulkhead, regulates turbo boost
by reducing the amount of boost pressure acting on the wastegate diaphragm. The valve can open and close up to 12 times a second, depending on engine speed. If the electrical supply fails, the valve will remain closed, limiting boost pressure to 4 pounds per square inch. Because boost pressure rather than vacuum can be present in the inlet manifold, the crankcase ventilation system is unique. Ventilation is dependent on two valves, one in the inlet manifold and one in the breather hoses between the engine and air filter. During overrun or at idle, when inlet manifold depression is high, crankcase fumes are drawn through both these valves. As engine speed increases, boost pressure closes the manifold valve to prevent the crankcase being pressurized. The fumes are then drawn in through the regulator valve and nozzle located in the base of the air cleaner. The fuel systems fitted to both the Metro and Montego are of the high pressure recirculating type. During cranking, the fuel pump receives power from the starter solenoid. Whilst the engine is running, the pump is fed current via the oil pressure switch. If the oil pressure drops or the engine should stall, the fuel pump will switch off. Fuel pressure is controlled by a regulator. This is influenced by a sensing hose connected to the plenum chamber. As turbo boost pressure rises, fuel pressure will also rise to ensure it's always four pounds per square inch above boost pressure. This means fuel can enter the pressurized float chamber at all times. Pressure regulators are preset at the factory via this adjusting screw, which must not be tampered with. A wrongly adjusted regulator can upset the fine balance between fuel line and float chamber pressure. In the Montego fuel system, the fuel tank contains a swirl pot. Inside this is the fuel pipe pickup strainer. The action of the swirl pot prevents air entering the fuel lines when the fuel tank levels are low. A vapor separator on the bulkhead prevents aerated fuel entering the carburetor by means of a fine gauze filter. The air-free fuel then flows via the top outlet to the carburetor. Any aerated fuel is directed through the bottom outlet to the pressure regulator and back to the tank. The Montego turbo has an intercooler to cool the air after leaving the turbocharger and before entering the engine. This increases the density of the air. When intake air temperature rises above 45 degrees Celsius, a spring-assisted flap in the intercooler is opened by the Waxstat, routing the air through the intercooler to the engine. To assist hot starting, the Montego Turbo has a carburetor cooling fan, operated by a thermostatic switch in the thermostat housing. When coolant temperature is above 70 degrees Celsius and the ignition off, the fan blows air around the float chamber for 12 to 15 minutes, cooling the fuel. A carburetor works on the principle that pressure within the float chamber is higher than that in the Venturi, whilst the engine is running. This allows fuel to be drawn from the float chamber into the engine. With turbo carburetors, the same rule must also apply. It's for this reason that the float chamber is also open to turbo boost pressure. The Venturi effect means that air pressure around the jet orifice is always lower than the float chamber. Pressurizing the float chamber, however, does have its problems. When the engine is switched off, a pressure difference may still exist for a short time between the float chamber and the Venturi, allowing fuel to enter the manifold and affect hot starting. To prevent this happening, the float chamber is vented to atmosphere by this solenoid-operated vent valve when the engine is switched off. 
Metro and Montego turbos are not only powerful, they're also economical. Fuel economy is achieved by weakening the air-fuel mixture during cruise conditions. The system, called a part-load weakener, consists of a small passage between the float chamber and the depression present in the carburetor during part throttle. The consequent reduction in float chamber pressure reduces fuel delivery. A restrictor ensures that float chamber pressure isn't reduced to the stage where misfire occurs. Fuel delivery isn't affected at idle because the drilling into the carburetor falls on the plenum side of the throttle disc. At full throttle, depression on the carburetor isn't sufficient to influence float chamber pressure through the weakener. This simple system allows maximum weakening of the mixture when cruising, without loss of performance or drivability. A turbo carburetor has a damper clamp, together with O-ring seals around the throttle spindle and suction chamber, to prevent leakage of boost pressure. It's very important that whenever the carburetor has been dismantled, it's retested using test equipment 18G1462 to ensure it remains airtight. Clean the mating faces of the carburetor and blanking plate gaskets. Secure the blanking plates complete with gaskets to the carburetor. Then seal all remaining vents to the carburetor. Using clips, attach one end of the regulator valve to an air supply. The other end should be attached to the carburetor blanking plate. Turn on the air. Submerge the carburetor in a bowl of water and check for signs of air leakage. Renew any gaskets or seals which leak, then retest. Dry the carburetor with a cloth and ensure the piston damper cap and its clamp are firmly secured. Correct tuning is essential. Care and attention at this stage is the only way to achieve peak performance. A turbo driver demands performance from his car and tuning the carburetor is probably the most important task of all. Make sure that engine tuning equipment is properly maintained, calibrated and used correctly. The tuning procedure on a turbo carburetor is the same as conventional carburetors. The engine must be in good mechanical condition and the valve clearances, ignition system and timing must be correct. Check that there are no air leaks in the manifolds or malfunctions with the carburetor vent valve. Make sure the air filter is clean and all vacuum, pressure and intake hoses are secure and free from kinks or splits. Switch off all electrical loads. Remove the damper, top up with engine oil and secure the clamp. Check for full throttle opening and the correct free play on the cable. Don't forget to check the intercooler hoses on the Montego, as air leaks here will reduce power. Also on the Montego, there must be a clearance between the fast idle screw and the stepper motor push rod. On Metro, ensure the choke control cable returns fully and has some free movement. Before beginning tuning, carry out a short road test to ensure the engine oil and coolant are at normal operating temperature. 
Start the engine and allow the idle speed to stabilize. Adjust as necessary. If the engine doesn't run smoothly at idle, adjust the mixture setting by turning the screw. Clockwise to enrich, anti-clockwise to weaken, until the fastest engine speed is obtained. Now turn the same screw anti-clockwise until the engine speed starts to fall. Then reset the idle speed. Remember on Montego when setting idle speed to adjust from a high value to the specified speed. Otherwise the engine management system will attempt to maintain an idle speed by operating the stepper motor whenever the speed falls below a certain level. If adjustments are not completed within three minutes, fuel may build up in the inlet manifold, affecting readings. Increase the revs to 2,500 for 30 seconds to clear the system. Using the exhaust gas analyzer, reset the mixture adjusting screw to obtain the specified CO level. On Montego, disconnect the coolant thermistor multiplug. When the ECU senses open circuit at the plug, it will index the stepper motor to a fast idle condition, without providing enrichment through the rotary choke. Start the engine and check the fast idle speed. Adjust if necessary. Switch off the engine and reconnect the coolant sensor. Road test the vehicle to ensure performance and idle are satisfactory. This is always a good cross check and remember, this is a test the owner will do. An orchestra can only give its best performance if the conductor understands the part played by each individual musician. In much the same way, a mechanic must understand the part played by each individual component of an engine. The most important factor during fault finding is to tackle it in a logical and disciplined way. On the fuel system, if fuel starvation is suspected, check fuel hoses for damage or kinks. And on Metro, don't forget the fuel line filter. To check the fuel pump, disconnect the fuel hose and attach pressure gauge 18G 1500. Also, disconnect the wire to the oil pressure switch and earth it. Turn on the ignition and note the fuel pressure which should be approximately 4 pounds per square inch. Don't forget to check the fuel cutoff inertia switch on Montego. If all these are working correctly, check the fuel pump relay. Disconnect the relay from the multiplug and bridge the terminals 85 and 3031. Switch on the ignition. If the fuel pressure is now correct, the relay is faulty and must be renewed. If there's still no fuel pressure, either the fuel pump is faulty or the fuel line is blocked. To check the fuel pressure regulator, disconnect the air pressure sensing hose from the plenum chamber and attach a Mitivac pump. Apply air pressure with the Mitivac and note the reading on the fuel pressure gauge. Remember, the fuel pressure should always be four pounds per square inch more than the air pressure applied to the regulator. If there's no increase in fuel pressure, it's the regulator that's faulty. A faulty carburetor vent valve may leak float chamber pressure to atmosphere, causing fuel starvation. This means the engine will run happily at idle, but not under load. To check this valve, 
simply disconnect the vent hose from the carburetor and apply a regulated air pressure to the valve with the Mitivac. If the valve doesn't hold pressure, check the electrical supply to the valve and its fuse. If the supply is OK, then the valve is faulty and should be replaced. A turbo requires very little maintenance other than periodic visual checks of its housing and fittings. Turbo failures are usually caused by one of the three turbo killers. Lack of lubricant, contamination of oil, intake of debris. Lack of lubricant flowing through the oil galleries will cause bearing failure leading to turbine and compressor wheel rub. Contaminated oil will score shaft journals and bearings and block up the oilways, causing major oil leakage. Objects drawn into the turbocharger will damage the blades on the turbine and compressor wheels. This distortion causes imbalance in their rotation. But turbos can be removed needlessly through incorrect fault diagnosis. Common symptoms of possible turbo faults are that either 1. The engine lacks power 2. Black smoke is emitted from the exhaust 3. Blue smoke is emitted together with high oil consumption or 4. The turbo is noisy when operating Lack of power and evidence of black smoke can mean there's not enough air reaching the carburetor intake. So check the air filter and intake hoses for restrictions and check for air leaks on the inlet and exhaust manifolds. If any of these faults occur, the sound of the turbo can change quite noticeably when under load. Lack of power on the Montego turbo can be caused by failure of the thermostat in the intercooler. This will allow excessively hot air to blow into the cylinders, which in turn will cause detonation. The knock sensor will detect the detonation and fully retard the ignition timing, causing lack of power. To test the thermostat, remove the bottom hose from the intercooler and see if you can move the flap by hand. If it moves, but its operation is still suspect, remove the intercooler to check the thermostat. Simply immerse the thermostat under water at 55 degrees Celsius and hold it there. If there's no movement, the intercooler is faulty and will have to be replaced. One thing to remember, never run the engine with the turbo intake hoses removed, as debris will be drawn into the compressor housing and damage the compressor blades. Check the compressor blades for damage and ensure that the shaft assembly rotates freely. An oil leak through the shaft seals in the turbo or a malfunction in the engine may result in blue smoke. If there's no excess movement in the shaft and the shaft runs freely, check that the turbo oil drain located behind the heat shield isn't blocked. Finally, check for excessive crankcase pressure. Ensure that both non-return valves are working correctly and that the engine breather hoses aren't kinked or blocked. If none of these symptoms are present, the lack of power is not caused by the turbo. So examine the engine for faults. If the turbo is faulty, replace it. And after installation, always prime the lubrication system before starting the engine. So to recap, tuning operations on turbocharged engines remain much the same as their normally aspirated counterparts but it's even more important to check for air leaks in the intake system, especially on the carburetor itself.
Also, considering the high rotational speeds of the turboshaft assembly, it's essential to have an adequate supply of clean oil. Anything that changes the prominence or pitch of the turbo whistle should be investigated. Air leaks in the system or a contaminated air filter are the usual causes. The replacement of a turbocharger in any event should be your last line of action after every other cause has been investigated. Improving performance has been the ambition of the British car industry since the dawn of motoring. The translation of that ideal into reality has spanned generations of dedicated engineering. The turbocharger owes its parentage to the superchargers of yesteryear and now powers today's supercars, bringing turbo power, performance and economy to the Metro and Montego range. But any performance is only as good as the tuning of the instrument. The customer demands excellence, and with your expert fault diagnosis and tuning, you can give him the power, economy and performance he expects.